What's going on you guys? You're watching Medwitch Made Simple. One of my Instagram followers has requested me to make a video on this topic. This video is about anti-herpes virus drugs. So the drug which comes to our mind when we think about anti-herpes virus drugs is acyclovir. Now in this video I'm considering this drug as a prototype drug and I'm gonna be describing about acyclovir in detail. In addition to that I'll be discussing about gancyclovir Valacyclovir, Famcyclovir, Cidafovir, Foscarnet, Edoxurudin, and Trifluridin. If you are new to my channel, make sure to like this video and share this video with your friends and most importantly subscribe to my channel. I'll be making new videos every week. Acyclovir. Now, it is a guanosine analog and it inhibits DNA synthesis in herpes viruses. Now, how does it inhibit DNA synthesis in herpes viruses? Now we'll be talking about the mechanism of action in a bit detail. When you take acyclovir, what it does is that the, uh, the viruses, herpes simplex viruses, will have a, an enzyme which is specific to them, which is known as thymidine kinase. This enzyme present in herpes simplex viruses will phosphorylate acyclovir to acyclovir monophosphate. Once this acyclovir monophosphate is formed, the enzymes which are present in our cells which are known as cellular kinases, will further phosphorylate acyclovir monophosphate to acyclovir triphosphate. Now, this is the active form of acyclovir. Now, what does acyclovir triphosphate do is that it inhibits DNA polymerase in the herpes simplex viruses. And by doing so, they affect the uh, DNA synthesis in the viruses. And also, they get incorporated into the viral DNA. And by doing so, they prevent the lengthening of the uh, herpes viral DNA. This is how the acyclovir acts on the herpes viruses. Now, there are certain benefits of acyclovir in treating these infections. Th this includes they are highly selective to virus infected cells. Now, what does this mean? If a person is infected with herpes simplex viruses, not all the cells in his body will be uh, infected with the viruses. Only a few cells will be infected. Now, if you give a drug which is highly selective to the virus infected cells, there will be lesser toxicity for that patient. Only the virus infected cells will be, uh, will be damaged, whereas the cells which are not in infected by the viruses will, will be uh, less commonly affected. So there will be less toxicity associated with acyclovir. That's a good thing. In addition to that, uh, there's a fact that they are more active against herpes simplex viruses 1 then herpes simplex virus 2, varicella zoster virus, and Epstein Barr virus. And you should also remember the fact that uh, they are not so effective against cytomegaloviruses. Resistance The herpes viruses develops resistance to acyclovir by uh, acquiring mutations leading to deficiency in the thymidine kinase enzyme activity. Now, as I've explained to you in the mechanism of action part, uh, for the action of acyclovir to take place, the viral specific enzyme, uh, thymidine kinase, which is present in the herpes viruses, should uh, must phosphorylate the acyclovir to acyclovir monophosphate. That's how uh, acyclovir can act on the viruses. If the, if the mutants uh, are deficient in the thymidine kinase activity, what happens is what what happens is there'll be uh, improper activation or improper effect of acyclovir that will lead to resistance of these viruses to acyclovir. Pharmacokinetics. They are twenty percent absorbed orally, and they can cross the CSF, and that means uh, they can be used in conditions like encephalitis. They can penetrate the cornea when they are used as topical eye ointments and their half-life is relatively short. It's about two to three hours. They're excreted by the kidneys by glomerular filtration and tubular secretion. Uses. It can be used in genital herpes as topical forms or oral form or even in parental form, parental form in severe cases. They can also be used in oral labial herpes in herpes simplex encephalitis because they can enter the cerebrospinal fluid and can cross the blood-brain barrier. They can also be used in herpes simplex keratitis, where they are very effective, but they act a bit slowly compared to an, another her anti-herpes drug known as edoxorudin. 
They can be used in herpes zoster, but they're not the drug of choice in treating herpes zoster. They can be used in chicken pox, uh, in which case it reduces the symptoms like rashes and the other accompanying symptoms. Adverse effects of these drugs are quite less. Topically, when used as ointments, they can cause local irritation. When taken orally, they can cause headache, malaise, and nausea. Intravenous administration of these drugs can lead to development of rashes, sweating, and decrease in BP, which are quite rare. And since they enter the blood brain barrier, they can lead to various neurological manifestations like tremors, dizziness, uh, unconsciousness, hallucinations, which are very rare. There are similar drugs like acyclovir, which includes valacyclovir, which is an ester prodrug of acyclovir. Now, it has improved oral bioavailability compared to acyclovir. So, there will be better action with valacyclovir compa compared to acyclovir. Okay, so most of the drug um, will be available to act compared to acyclovir. If you remember that, I, when I've described about pharmacokinetics of acyclovir, I've told that only 20% of the drug uh, when taken orally is absorbed in the case of acyclovir, but it is quite more, uh, ranging up to 60% of the oral drug is available for action in valacyclovir. Now, valacyclovir is a drug of choice in herpes zoster, and famcyclovir is another drug which is ester product of pencyclovir. In addition to being active against herpes viruses, famcyclovir is also active against hepatitis B virus. Now, another drug known as gancyclovir, which is an analog of acyclovir, it is active against herpes simplex virus, varicella zoster virus, Epstein Barr virus, and cytomegalovirus. Now, you can see the fact that uh, gancyclovir is active against cytomegalovirus, whereas acyclovir is not so active against cytomegaloviruses. So this makes these drugs suitable to be used in cytomegalovirus infections. Gancyclovir uh, is mostly taken up by cells which are infected with cytomegaloviruses and there's a very important toxicity associated with gancyclovir which is bone marrow toxicity. This is because gancyclovir also specifically targets and causes damage to the precursor cells of the bone marrow so they can be associated bone marrow toxicity associated with gancyclovir. Now more info on these drugs will be available in my blog page soon. So the next drug is Cidofovir. Cidofovir is a drug which is already in phosphorylated form so it does not require the viral phosphokinase enzyme that is the thymine uh, kinase enzymes which, uh, which is required in the case of acyclovir activation. So it is not dependent on the virus for activation. It remains intracellular for longer periods, so they can be given once weekly also, uh, so they'll be having prolonged action. Cidofovir can be given along with oral probenicid for increased bioavailability. Probenicid will decrease the excretion of Cidofovir from the body by preventing its excretion by kidneys, and by doing so, they increase the bioavailability of Cidofovir uh, leading to enhanced action. Cidofovir can be used in cytomegalovirus retinitis in HIV infected patients. Phoscarinate is another drug which is not related to any nucleic acid precursor unlike the previous drugs which I have discussed. It inhibits the DNA polymerase in herpes viruses and it also inhibits the enzyme reverse transcriptase in HIV virus. It can cause high toxicity, the most severe toxicity being acute renal failure and it can also lower the HIV titers in HIV patients. For example, when a HIV infected patient who, is, uh, who acquires cytomegalovirus infections and if we treat that patient with phoscarinate, in addition to lowering the cytomegalovirus infection, phoscarinate can also lower the HIV titers in such patients and so it is uh, very effective. Yeah. Formivirsin. Formivirsin is an antisense oligonucleotide. It binds to mRNA of cytomegalovirus and by doing so it interferes transcription in cytomegalovirus. It can be used in cytomegalovirus retinitis in which case it is injected into the vitreous humor 
uh, it is used once weekly or once monthly however this drug is not so commonly used because of the associated toxic effects Edoxuridine is another drug which inhibits the DNA synthesis in the viruses it is a time eating analog and it gets incorporated into the viral DNA and by doing so they, they lead to the production of faulty DNA can be used in herpes simplex keratitis but it has oster action compared to acyclovir but it has got associated side effects like ocular irritation there is another similar drug to edoxuridine which is a tri which is known as trifluoridine which has got similar mechanism of action to edoxuridine and similar adverse effects to edoxuridine if you like this video and if you want me to make more videos consider donating me on www.patreon.com slash made simple simply visit this website and click on become a patron button to know what you get by donating to my channel if you like this video make sure to like this video and uh, hit the like button share this video to your friends comment what videos you want in the future in the comment section below most importantly subscribe to my channel for more videos thanks for watching i'll see you in my next video